Hello, welcome to Adobe Live. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm so excited to be here with Andy Lambert again. Hi, Andy. Hey, Jordan. How are you? Good. I'm honestly really excited for this stream. We come here every week and talk about like social media strategy and online marketing strategy. And today's is all about using community to grow your business. And this is maybe my favorite topic in the world. So I'm really, really excited. We've been uh, threatening to talk about this one for a while, haven't we? So uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm excited too. <laughs> yeah. So um, I guess we should introduce ourselves because we did not do that. If we haven't met yet, I'm Jordan Danae Ellis. I am the community manager for Adobe Express. And we'll talk a little bit more about the other things I do. Um, but, and this is Andy, who, uh, I'll let you introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking forward to hearing how you'd introduce me. Okay, so, fine. Uh, this is Andy Lambert. He is a senior product manager at Adobe. Um, came over with Content Cal, so he's in charge of our scheduling uh, part of Adobe Express and does a lot of other, yeah, I don't know. You do a lot of other really cool things, a lot of things for learning opportunities for Adobe Express, obviously working on our community team. What am I missing? I think that's good. I think you covered it beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. It's a good job. Welcome. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Let's um let's dive into the uh, the slides actually because we're we're gonna set out this agenda and then uh, we're gonna fire through what will be, as you can tell, quite a high energy session because yes. this this topic makes us both very excited because this is why we're in social media to build communities and basically let social become social. Funnily enough, so um we're gonna start if you haven't joined one of these before. Um, we'll recap um, what we recap when we do one of these sessions. So this is the the 6C content strategy. That's what we work on. So this is the social media strategy framework that, we, that we've been working through over the last few sets of videos. And if you've missed a few of the Adobe Lives before, not to worry because we've got them all on the playlist on the YouTube channel, of which I'm sure someone kind will drop the link in the chat somewhere. Uh, so you can catch up on all those other pieces um, and we're at the fourth of the sixth step now so we're going to just do a quick recap and check in on that then we're going to set the scene as to why community and by extension collaboration is important so working with others in the social sphere and how we can build those communities to grow our businesses then we're going to go into our resident community managers tips and tactics so this is going to be over to, to jordan uh, because I'm really excited to, to really deep dive into to some of this because Jordan's got a brilliant perspective from both building smaller communities that are in, in a niche setting as a small business owner and also managing uh, communities of nearly 100,000 in a Facebook group for one of the world's biggest brands being Adobe. So yeah, really exciting two ends of the spectrum to cover here. So wherever you are um, and whatever you do, I think there's going to be lots to take away. And then we're going to bring it to life in terms of a live demo because there, there are a lot of components that go into how to build a community. There's no right way or wrong way, etc. cetera, but um, there are ways to stoke community engagement. And we're gonna show you how you can kind of make that a bit easier using Adobe Express. When I say we, that is very much the royal we. <laughs> does, as usual, the harder bits of this. Never, never. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything I've missed, Jordan, before we, we dive no, into? No, that's perfect. This is great. Awesome, right. So this is the 6C content strategy that we've been talking about. So how to build a content strategy in six steps. So we're at step number four, collaboration and community here. And we're going to recap on the on the first three right now. And the next two are coming up week after next. We'll be talking about social media channels, how we can distribute our content far and wide to, to grow our brands across multiple channels. And then we're going to talk about the analytical piece, which I get very excited about because I am very much uh, a data nerd. Cool. Right. Let, let's start with this because this is the, the customer side of things. And I'll only touch on this at a high level because you can go deeper into the, um, the the previous videos that we've done. But number one part of that, of that social media strategy and the six step strategy is all about intrinsically understanding who we're trying to serve. And here at this point, we want to be thinking about psychographics over demographics. And what I mean by that is that the more meaningful thing to understand for your target audience will be the things that emotionally drive them because it's those emotional levers are the things that actually mean the most. So it means more that uh, our customer is, you know, excited about something, what they want to achieve, what they're worried about, rather than 
our target customer is, for example, a 25 year old living in New York, for example, right? We need to be very specific about you know, the emotional drivers of who we're trying to solve or who we're trying to serve rather. So once we know intrinsically who we're trying to serve and really, as we say each time, focus is the key here, then it becomes much easier to then go into the context. So step two of the 6C strategy, context. The best way to think about context is in the context of content themes. There's a lot of C's happening right now. So um, these content themes are a real way to make things easier on yourself. So always recommend somewhere between three to five themes to add into your content calendar every single week because those themes won't change each week. It gives you a real nice framework in which that you can create content within. So to give you a, a real life example from uh, the time of creating and building Content Cal, which was a, a social media product that, that we created, um, one thing we truly understood about our audience is that they were, they were worried about feeling left behind in the changes that are constantly happening in the world of social. So that was one of those kind of emotional drivers that we truly understood from our audience. Knowing that information made the content theme of social media news really easy to build around, right? We know that's a gap for those, those target audience. We, know, we knew that was something that they truly cared about. So every single week, we'd have a section of content talking about social media news. Not rocket science, this isn't wildly complex, but it really just means that, right, we understood our audience, and then all we're gonna do is then wrap up what we understand and serve content that creates inherent value you know, across these content themes. We spoke about creativity, which is about bringing it to life in a number of different ways, which we then uh, use Adobe Express for, and that now takes us into collaboration and community. And the reason that this is super powerful, because I, I think this is the bit that's not thought about enough in the world of social media. We often think so much about what we're putting on our own channels, not thinking heavily enough about what other people are saying about us, because the things that people will say about us are the things that will mean the most. And, and there's a, a real clear psychological reason as to why that happens. Because fundamentally, the only way we make decisions and buy products, etc., is through trust. We don't do anything or buy anything unless we trust that person, that individual, that product. And that's really what a brand is. A brand is a mark of trust, ultimately. So if we think about that, we think about how is trust built? Well, trust is built over time. Like if you're introduced to someone at a party and you end up becoming lifelong friends, that is not the work of a moment. But the thing that shortcuts trust is when someone that you already uh, have trust within recommends something to you. Immediately, it shortcuts trust. And therefore, you immediately assimilate whatever you've been recommended by that individual as a trustworthy product. That is the reason that word of mouth has always been and will always continue to be the most powerful marketing tactic. And that is the thing that excites me most about social media because it gives you the opportunity to put word of mouth, basically put a light of fire under word of mouth and have word of mouth then happens at scale. That's what's really exciting because then when you think about that as the kind of psychological reasons as pe why people buy products, then you start to realize the power of the channels that you don't own. And that's really what we're gonna focus this talk around. And there's, there's three dimensions to think about when it comes to how we'll collaborate with a community. Number one is around user generated content. And Jordan, I'm going to come to you in a second in this because mm -hmm. I think you've got a, a good, My example, favorite. <laughs> good example around this. And fundamentally, this goes back to the trust point, right? Because naturally, this is the, your ability to represent what people are saying about you. So there's a couple of ways you can use user generated content, right? It's about firstly encouraging it. The ways that you can encourage it is by delighting people and using those moments of delight as content opportunities. I'll give an example. So if you are, you know, a retail business and maybe you're selling handcrafted goods, maybe on an Etsy shop or something like that, putting a little handwritten note with a bit of a story about you and like, you know, what it means that someone's purchased this product from you and then encouraging that person to share, perfect content opportunity. You're at the point of delight. That person is in that most, you know, that headspace that will feel, they'll feel encouraged to share because they're like, this is really, I feel seen, heard and respected. I, you know, it feels good when someone does something spontaneous for you. So naturally that's going to be a moment you can share. And when people share it, that's great. Making sure they tag you, etc. 
What you can then do is then reuse that user generated content and make sure the things that you're populating on your own feed is, is a lot around user generated content. That becomes maybe one of your content themes as well, right? So one of it could be your news theme and one of the whole theme every week could just be you surfacing one of your favorite posts or a couple of your favorite posts that have been posted about you across the week. Once again, this isn't complex stuff. It's just about thinking with a thinking about your whole business with a social media first lens. So um, I'll I'm say too, pause. just to interrupt you. Okay. Sorry. Oh, are you going to pause no, anyway? I'm, no, oh. I'm literally going to go to you now because I'll be speaking so much. So no, <laughs> over to you. I was just going to say, if, to me at least, that's such a win-win for both sides because at least, so I've been on both sides, right? As as a business owner, there are so many benefits to this. Like one, you get the the social proof that other people out in the world are enjoying your thing. Two, just as a business owner, it's lovely to see people enjoying what you make. Like that is a wonderful thing. And then it also, this part I think is like the real magic of how win-win it is because when I share something with like a brand and then they reshare it, it's so special to me. Like, I love that. I don't know if anyone in, and when watching has ever done that, where you're like, oh my God, I shared this thing. And then the person who made it liked it enough to share it back. That's great. And then as the creator, it's an amazing gift to be given things that you can reshare. So it's like win-win for everyone. I mean, obviously ask permission first, um, but that's like, I just think it's one of the most incredible for both sides. Like, it it makes the person sharing the photo feel special and then you get to like get all of the benefit and also promote you know someone else enjoying your thing and then everyone's happy <laughs> like really it is just win-win to me exactly and it's like actually before i carry on talking that are there any examples that you have um like examples that you've seen that you've participated in or things that you've done for your your small business as well to encourage user-generated content yeah, I'll show um, what I actually send, but especially, so, I mean, this may be relatable to folks watching. Um, also, just wanted to say hi to the chat. Um, Anika is in there, as always, our favorite, and Sean and Becker are here, lots of other folks. Thank you all so much for being here today. Ask us uh, if you have any questions while we're chatting, feel free to drop them in the chat. But as a small business owner who like did not have a marketing budget, especially when I was starting Etsy, I really was like, I don't know how to get the word out. Like I have, I don't know, a hundred followers. They're all my family <laughs> and friends. And like, I do not know what to do. So I would send out a card with every order that said, thanks so much for your order. If you share this, I will send you a discount code. I, f I think it was for five or $10. Um, and like share with the hashtag, tag me. And that's really how my business grew. Like I never had an ad budget. I didn't boost things. I didn't have, so, you know, it cost the amount of money that it cost to print a couple hundred cards, whatever that was, 50 bucks. Um, I didn't have Adobe Express at the time because this was 12 years ago, but it's really easy to make in there with a template or whatever. Um, and then that's, that's it. And that was like the biggest boost to my business. And then just like the thing that's really cool that comes after that, we're talking about building community. The folks who were really invested would share photos over and over and I would start seeing the same people. Um, so that was for me, that's what made my business feel real. I was like, okay, I have like repeat customers who are sharing my things um, because they love them and then we'll talk about this in a little bit but like that grew into an ambassador program some of them are my best friends one of them is mallory who then got me this job at adobe <laughs> like there are so many ways Magic. that that has yeah transformed my life truly um and it is not expensive and it just takes a little bit of effort so could not speak more highly of this strategy if i'm being honest Exactly. And just, to, just a couple other points to add before, before you move on yeah. as well. Like it's, it's not always like, you know, we speak a lot in like a B2C retail context. Um, obviously, my, all of my context is in kind of B2B. Yeah. So, um, you know, even from the days of, of Content Cal, we would encourage people to kind of share photos of themselves using our software. We're a software product. It's kind of, it's intangible, but still getting people, showing the humans behind the work that, mm -hmm. that they're doing on our software product. 
And of course, the, the way we encourage people do, to do that was to incentivize the right behavior, right? So it doesn't mean paying people money. It's just those things like, like discount codes or giving them a month free if you're on a subscription or something like that. Yeah. Those things are, it's surprising. And it's like, oh, you don't need, need to give me anything back, but thank you, I'll appreciate it. And it's like, though it's those moments. Um, and there's a, there's a psychological theory called reciprocity. So if you're the first to give, so if you give generously to your customers and offer certain perks or discounts, people feel compelled to offer back and hopefully offer back in the form of sharing. So that's, it just basically needs to be the, the cornerstone of your marketing strategy, thinking about how can we get whoever interacts with whatever product or service it is that we do to then go ahead and share it and share it naturally and authentically. That's that's also a key element. And just a, just one other call out as well, is that once you've started to apply this logic to your business, uh, a daily practice really should be, you know, if people tag you, great, respond to that. Of course, responding to your comments um, and responding to- I think we'll it. say this every single session that we ever do. Please respond to your comments, <laughs> it's the best thing you can do if someone if you're lucky enough to have folks talking to you please talk to them back exactly and just also don't forget that people might not tag you so one of the the daily practices uh because we spent a lot of time on linkedin as a kind mm -hmm. of b2b business content cal every single morning my practice would be just to search content cal in the search in the top of linkedin do you can do the same on on every social platform just look at all of the content that was posted yesterday in case of anything you might have missed and i found so much stuff so much goodness um that hadn't been tagged correctly or kind of slightly misspelled and then you, <laughs> you don't the, want to you, you don't miss any of that <laughs> you don't want to miss any of that you'll never catch it all but it's it just should be like a, a, a daily practice so that you get into you know every, each morning i would go through the comments and respond to them all each morning i would look at every mention respond to it because you don't want to be fixed to your phone and thinking you have to respond in the moment. Just allow some time for it. Just make it part of your, your habit because uh, your future self and your future business will thank you because you'll have a community for life. And that's a pro tip too. If you schedule it in, then you don't, like you said, um, not being tied to your phone. That's something that I have had to figure out a process for because when you're when you are a business or you're doing any type of community job it feels like to be to be up on things you need to literally spend your whole life on your phone but when you have these scheduled in times then you can relax the rest of the time because you know you'll get to it so like if you do it you know an hour every morning or depending on how much chatter there is maybe every other day or once a week whatever it is but if you know that's coming then in the off time you can relax like oh, i'll get to it on this on my calendar like it's coming um so i think that's that's another really good tip definitely definitely agree because there is yeah we need to make space and time for this as much as we need to make space and time for not being glued to social media yeah. for sure um, it's a balance. It's, it's, an eternal it's, always, balance. A, it's always a balance. Uh, and sometimes we get the balance wrong, but you know, uh, it's, yeah. it's yep. all, part of, it all part of the process. <laughs> um, what, one of the truly amazing things of, of user generated content and having people become your content creators uh, is this, which is about representation, right? So this is more than optics, as it says here, because quite simply, um, the more you are, your business is bigger than you or your company or whatever, right? So your customer base is bigger than you. So which likely means they're going to represent many different walks of life. Mm -hmm. So whatever that representation is, think about that. Let that kind of, you know, just be in, in your mind, in the front, I was about to say front of your mind, uh, back of your mind, but it should be in the front of your mind as to thinking about how we apply user-generated content should not just be critical because it's like about you know how we grow our business and how we get more likes and shares it's an essential component of any modern day business because we need to have and represent a diverse range uh, of individuals because that then means if, if people can see themselves using that product or doing whatever it is that your your business does then when people see themselves and they feel represented seen heard respected the, the stuff that you know any common decent human should, should, yes. <laughs> should factor in um that naturally makes business sense and a kind of strand of that as well we've spoken about it a couple of times before is you know alt text as well alt text or alternative text is is really just there um to help those that are 
um, have visual impairments. So to be able to, to see what's happening or to have to, to be read out what's happening on uh, the video or the image that's being displayed. Good news is pro tip because you know, some, suddenly this can feel like really complex and loads of things to consider as a small business. The good news is, is that user generated content is one of the, the best ways to, to achieve representation, right? Because they're, they're the genuine users of the product. So, so that's another way reason that we really should should lean on this as much as we possibly can. And alt text is something that's made possible. So, if you're reposting one of your kind of UGC images, you can also use the alt text feature within a content scheduler within Adobe Express to make that a bit easier for yourself as well. Yeah, uh, truly, that's a great feature. Uh, don't sleep on that. It makes it a lot easier. I mean, scheduler again, one of my favorite things about Express, but. Also, the fact that you can um, schedule in alt text is great. And I'll just say one more thing to that point. Um, it is really like incredibly valuable to think about like the diversity in your audience. And for me, at least, this helps me do that, like paying attention to the audience. Like they're letting you know how like what the beautiful rainbow like range of your community is. And so like having all of that when you can look at um, I don't know. I just feel like that's so helpful to actually get to know a diverse group of people. That is like such a, it's such a helpful way for me to think about people coming at this from like a different mindset or in a different worldview or in a different situation. Um, so I just think that's like another benefit of being involved in communities. You're going to hear a lot of different ideas, a lot of different angles, which I think is something that's incredibly important, especially for business owners or yeah, anyone speaking to an audience to think about like how different folks are. And this is a really good way to remind yourself and get like a pulse on that. Definitely with you. Definitely with you. Um, so the, the, the last piece that I wanted to chime in on uh, before we um, hand over to, to Jordan to, to bring it to life a little bit for us um, are some of the, the tools that we have at our disposal uh, mm -hmm. to start making this a reality for us. Because there's, there's a couple of ways you can think about collaboration and community and community building. One of the ways is what we've covered through user-generated content and finding those touch points to, to encourage um, the sharing um, of a user experience. And, and another way is, is more kind of directed related to uh, business growth or at least marketing, right? Because one of the elements of this is about finding those communities that perfectly fit Going back to your customer, you know, when we're focused on our target customer, finding those communities where those customers hang out in and then going to those communities. Once yeah. again, this is this is not you know game changing narrative for me here, but it's one of those things that it's like it's so obvious, but so few people do it. Honestly, it was uh, it's probably a bold statement, but I think it was up there within like the top five to ten best things we ever did to, yeah. to build content cal from nothing into being acquired by Adobe, which is obviously a you know a dream scenario. But really it all started, you know, a business is only as strong as the community that's around it. So if you start your business thinking community first, then you build your you build your business on solid foundations. And for that content cow, it was it was us finding those social media communities, spending a lot of time to get to know the owners of those communities, hanging out in them, getting a, a sense of, you know, what were the general narrative was, what are the things they're frustrated about, what their shared joys. Once again, that informs your kind of customer stuff. There is no better customer research than spending a whole week just observing a Facebook group around your target audience. Yeah. Whether it's you know, whether it's Facebook group or Discord or whatever, but there there are groups for everything. I've yet to find something that's not represented by some form of group or community around it. So spending time there not only helps you understand your customer, it also means you can start to find the people to work with. And when you find those people to work with, that's when the magic happens because all of that, you know, wonderful target audience, like emotional drivers are all within that community. And also because like, the owners of those communities, like we said before, you know, about how trust works, all of those owners of communities, naturally the, the community looks up to the whoever is running that community as the person, you know, they would trust that person, right? They trust their advice. They've come to know, like, and respect them. And that means working with those individuals that have those trusted communities. This is like influencer marketing, but at yeah. a much more useful scale, because typically we've kind of lost, influencer marketing kind of got a bit 
confused in the way we've approached it. It's just become about like, you know, million dollar influencers with massive followers. And it's like, that's actually not meaningful. I would much rather do the smaller uh, activations within like those, those niche communities, because that's really where the magic happens, where word of mouth starts kind of you know we see that fire of word of mouth starting sorry jordan you're gonna chime in on this oh no 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 yes to all of that um i was just it's like the the micro influencer or like you know the the real people like obviously there is a benefit to chatting with someone or working with someone with a massive following but for me at least i've done both um Sometimes working with someone with a massive following will get you like a little hit for a second. And then working with someone with who's a regular person who like actually talks about my business in their daily life with their friends because they're a true fan has time after time been the thing that works um, for me. So I just could not agree more <laughs> with what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you know, once again, it's 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 sensible. It all makes sense because it, it should. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So not only can you think about those, find those communities and you can just search Facebook groups or search Discord for, you know, your, your um, chosen category and you'll find those communities. Just just my, my main call out, and this is the thing I try and stop everyone doing when I get excited about this thing. Don't see it as a transactional like media yeah. buy. You know, yes. it's not media. This is relationships we're dealing with. Um, because this is about genuine advocacy. And there'll be, you know, there were times I've spent a lot of time building a relationship and then people weren't like, oh, I don't really get the value of content cards. And that's okay, you know, that's mm -hmm. fine. I'm not gonna pay you, you know, to, to talk about something that you wouldn't in your own time advocate for, right? Absolutely. Sim simple as that. We've met, I've made those mistakes. We spent yeah, in the content card days, numbers that I really wouldn't want to say live mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. on like influencer engagements. And it just, it just hasn't worked. Yeah. Um, and it hasn't worked because it's like just a single one and done rather than I'm actually a valuable member of this community. I operate within the, the community, within the category, and I spend time adding value to that community because their, their trust grows, etc. And with that, ba on that basis then, so the final thing I'll say before I hand over to, to Jordan, because one, working with communities and two, using some of these tools around you as, as ways to figure out what do you do when you've built relationships with those individuals within your in your space in your category etc um we could do you know an, an instagram collab post keep it really simple you can do a post tag um both of you in or kind of invite someone to be a collaborator and when someone accepts that request it means that that post goes to both your followers very simple but it means the reach of that content quite simply is over double what it would have been if it was just you alone right yeah so that's just once again the power of the channels that you don't own and then you know equally what you've got is other tools like um tiktok's branded missions as well which is just super powerful i'd recommend anyone uh, to go and check that out i won't do it justice to explain it in this time but um super powerful for for you setting a challenge and allowing lots of other people to create content related to that and final thing is all of your um, your social channels like your YouTube, Facebook, Insta, they all have multi-person live streams, which is um, an incredible, well, basically we're doing it now. What we're doing We now do it in the Facebook group exactly too. It. Yeah, it's all over the place. It's great. <laughs> so I told you we could talk about this forever. We've got, there's hopefully a load of kind of tips and tactics you can take away, but let's then start to make this a bit more practical. So Jordan, I think at this point, we're going to go ahead yeah. and hand it over to you. I'll say we have some agreement in the chat too. Kenneth was talking about um, micro and nano influencers can be more um, powerful, which is great. Totally agree. And then really quickly, we had a question from Jennifer asking, how do you get the motivation to run your own business? Which is a big question. Um, and I have kind of two answers and then I'll see if you have anything to add. One, sometimes I don't like there is a, I did have to, so I started my business in 2011, which was, um, what is that? 11 years ago at this point. And it wasn't for me the whole time. So I would run my business as like a side gig and do other things. I only ran it full time for like three years and now I'm running it as a side gig again, because I was not that interested in doing it full-time forever. So I, I'm really happy to have had, to now have um, 
a full-time job and do it as a hobby because that worked out for me. So if you are like doing some soul searching and it's really not for you anymore, that's okay. But if you are set on it and doing it, um, for me truly, this is, I'm going to sound like I'm making this up, but community is like the motivating thing. Like, I'm not kidding. This is my favorite thing to talk about. So anytime when I was running my business full time and I thought about stopping, I thought about everyone who loved what I do so much that motivated me to keep going. Um, so like, that's even why I'm running it now as a hobby. I didn't want to let it go because for the folks who love what I make, for the folks who love being a part of my community and part of my projects, I, that's what motivates me to keep going. Um, and so Becca asked the difference between running it as a side gig or full time. Basically it's it basically it's the salary and the amount of hours. So like I was, you know, making my full time salary on it for a while. That wasn't my favorite way to live, <laughs> paying all my own benefits and doing all those things. I don't know if that's relatable in the chat. Um, so for me now I'm doing this wonderful community management job for Adobe full time. And then I'm doing, you know, nights and weekends for my hobby. But I don't know if you have anything to add before we move on. And no, I think you've, you've encapsulated it perfectly. Yeah, there's no actually. right answer. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no perfect answer. I wish there was. Um, okay. So if you have more questions about running a business, feel free to drop them. Um, and otherwise I will show you some of the ways that I have used um, everything we've been talking about. So like I mentioned, I've run a bunch of businesses over the past three years. I have a super niche. I've brought this up before. If you're worried that your business or project is too niche, let me, <laughs> let me let you know. It's probably not more niche than mine. So I have like <laughs> a feminine leaning pop culture, nerd culture, fashion brand, which like actually is a much better bigger community than it was before. Um, in 2011, there were like two other people literally on the planet doing this. I'm really thankful. Now it's like a thing that you can go into lots of popular stores and get things made for female bodies that look like they were designed for us. Super, super thankful that this industry has grown. Um, but this is the brand that started as an Etsy shop. And so this is like how, um, this is, how my business grew using everything we've been talking about. So the first thing I'll call out is that I do ask every, with every order, I send out a little card that says like, please, please send in a photo. Um, and then I'll, I have a hashtag here in my bio. That's a great way to let folks know. Cause not everyone keeps the mail that comes with their packages, if I'm being honest. So I have it, I have the hashtag here in my bio. Um, and I have already talked about how this is like a very side business for me now. User generated content is like the main thing. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. This will be almost all either customers sending in photos or um, ambassadors, which I'll talk about in one second. But a few of the really cool things we've talked about the collaboration tool. I also let everyone know in my audience, like, feel free to collaborate with me and I'll just accept the collaboration. And then guess what, guys? That's all you have to do. So like, this is Alice, who is an ambassador. She collabed this post with me. So I just had to hit accept. And then I have a post now. And like, magic. I didn't have to think about what to post this day. And for, especially for the times where like, I was in grad school and I'm working full time, like things like that are an amazing way to say like, Thank you for posting this. I love it. I want it on my page. I literally just had to press one button. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so the user generated content and the ambassador program um, kind of both started very small and scrappy, like sending out a card with my Etsy orders. And then the ambassador program too started very scrappy, like just asking folks um, who I already knew and recognized if they wanted to join. And it was like, Hey, I'll send you a free product every once in a while, if you'll post about it. And then thankfully that has grown. Um, and now it's like an official program. I run it through my Shopify. There's an app that I can run it through and folks get commission and they get free products. And we have a discord where we all hang out and we have a monthly newsletter. So that's just like one way, um, that this has worked out really well for me, but also just to call out, um, We've talked about like the diversity aspect, which I think is really important. So this is something incredible, like scrolling through. Like, this is what the real people who 
where my products look like. Um, it's all different body types, all different parts of the world. Um, so this is just like a really cool feature, I think, um, of actually showcasing real people. That's that's one of my favorite Such features. A brilliant example of everything we've just been talking about actually so yeah um, i do uh, it like this is not this is not a presentation we put together to look good this is literally the only reason i've ever made any money off of my side business so i like <laughs> could not stand more highly by every single thing that we're talking about today talking um, about collabs actually we got a question from from linkedin here um about uh, is it a good idea to collaborate with a competitor okay i've got a view but i'm interested in your take T tell yours first because this is actually a perfect segue into what I was going to talk about next. So give your answer and then I'll give mine. I personally say yes um, because there's there's always opportunity in collaborations, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're still trying to raise. I mean, essentially, as a competitor, you still have a shared mission in raising the awareness of the the problem that you're trying to solve, right? So whether it's software, whether it's services or whatever, you're out there to address some form of user need. So naturally it pays to make, to raise the profile of whatever it is that you're trying to solve and collaborating with others is good for that. Of course, you know, naturally promoting others' products is probably not as good, but equally everyone is sensible enough to know who's in the market or what yeah. the available solutions are because you're just one Google search away from it any times. So if it's played in the right way that you're talking about something of immense value to the user and you've both got perspectives around it, you still have, even a competitor, you've got total alignment of what you're actually trying to solve, presuming they're a direct competitor. And at the end of it can just be simply like, there's a few ways to solve it, of which there's product A or product B. And yeah, I still see that as, a, as an opportunity personally. What about you, Jordan? Okay, I'm gonna answer this in a roundabout way. Um, so I'm going to, finish off. So this is, this is the one business. This is the business that I started with, excuse me. Um, and just to show you, um, this is my, this is my Adobe express library. So like, this is my, thank you for sharing card just to show you, um, before I move on to the next thing. So like I made this in express, you can, I swap out the photo every once in a while, I can switch out the code really easily. So this is the first business. And the reason this is a good segue is, I had that exact same question where I was like, okay, now I'm in this like very specific geek fashion niche um, and I'm selling products and I, I now have a bunch of other friends doing the same things that are technically competitors, but like we are friends and I wasn't sure what to do with that. I was like, I want to promote their stuff, but it's going to be really confusing if like I sell t-shirts and then I'm talking about my friend selling t-shirts and then it's on my shop page like what do I do I don't recommend this for everyone by any means but I spun it off into another business another side project um because I wanted to do like that was really important to me I was like there are so many cool people I want to highlight all of them I want to collaborate with them I want to do I want to do things with them because like I'm I'm community over competition every day probably not a surprising thing for to hear me say um so i literally started a second business that like took away that question for me so this is this is a side project that i'm running with a friend of mine where it's just all about this niche so it's everyone in geek fashion wearing it making it um going to events and so this was my solution to that so i was like cool i can promote my own company competitors companies like uh companies that I already partner with. Um, so yeah, again, don't necessarily recommend that as like the answer, but that is, that's it's what I decided smart, to do. <laughs> it's, I, I love how you kind of downplay a lot of the stuff that you've done, but that's like, that's super smart. Basically to see that as an opportunity to then create the community for that category. Yeah. Um, because obviously it's, if you have that foundation of community, you can build anything on top of it because, you know, as far as I'm concerned, like like with you, you know, if I was going to start a business again tomorrow, I would build the community, then worry about what product I was going to build mm -hmm. later on. Um, yeah. Because if you've got the community, everything else is pretty easy from there.
That's exactly what I did actually. So this, this project started as just an Instagram page. Like there was nothing else behind it. It was just, I'm going to use this page to highlight other folks. And then it turned into a podcast and a print magazine and challenges. Um, so that's like to give the full context, what this, what I do with this brand is yeah. All of those things. We have a podcast where I can, I think I've demoed in other past things. Like, um, like we can do episodes where I, interview other people in the industry and then I can share that and we collab posts there. So like get in front of both of our audiences, have a magazine where I can interview and hire artists and writers in the community, which is amazing. Um, and then this is the really fun thing we're doing right now, which I think was a part of our demo from a couple weeks ago, but we're doing a fashion challenge. So we have prizes um, from other folks in the community. This is going for the month of October. So it's such a fun way. Like this is peak everything we're talking about where mm -hmm. this doesn't cost any money other than like I donate the prizes. Sometimes I get other folks to donate too. Um, but it, it's, it just takes the idea. Like I made this in Adobe express and then I'll show you my library. I make these little weekly reminders. Um, for all four weeks. And then all of the other posts are user generated, um, which is incredible. So similarly, like it's a lot of collaborative posts. So like, you know, this is my friend Casey who collaborated with us. I let folks know in the, oops, in the, um, in the description of it, oh, sorry, um, to, to feel free to collaborate because then their posts will definitely get featured. And then we have a feed full of incredible photos. So that is, we do it every season um, that I work with um, some other partners and it's just been a really cool way to get the community involved. It doesn't cost anyone any money. We get to feature all of these cool folks. They meet each other and like, because I think I have the best community in the world, but it's so supportive. So like everyone follows the hashtag and then tells each other how great they look. And some people are like, I'm so nervous to post for this. And so we tell them they're doing great. And then they come back. Like, it's just, it's the most for me, like soul filling thing that I do. Um, and then business wise, just it, the benefits are, I can't even, I can't even explain how great it is to have all of these new people come in, folks share with their friends. It's the best. As far as your, your community goes, it's, you would refer to your community as your Instagram followers right? Mm -hmm. We okay. do have a discord. It's a lot smaller. So yes, most of my community is on Instagram. That's where, um, that's where I find people. And yeah. Have you, I'm, I'm curious of like the, the difference between the, um, the Insta followers versus, uh, discord. Is there like a slightly different cohort of people? Or is it more like the, the hardcore? The are hardcore the... folks are right. on discord. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the people who like, are super involved. Um, we've had a book club over on Discord. It's the people who like want to write for the magazine, want to write for our site, want to help us come up with prompts for the next child. Like the folks who are like, I'm a part of this. Um, and they're on Instagram too, but then, then Instagram is like a broader, just kind of more casual reach and collection of books. <laughs> Because you can see the kind of progression playing out from like the early days of you putting the handwritten notes to getting people to share some user generated content. You see that progressing through to challenges to to really help more user generated content happen at yeah. scale. Then as that happens more, then you know you get the super fans naturally. There'll be some that are you know are kind of marginal engagers, and some of them are like you know really into it. Then they move into a Discord, and you just kind of see that as like a natural progress or progression. So it's it's nice to hear it from from that perspective because you know we're talking about like the end state with you here yeah. but it all started just with a you know a really simple tactic. So it's like just doing that one thing is just the start of a of a journey of how you'll grow and develop a community, right? Yeah, and like I said, I've boosted a few posts, but this is basically no marketing budget. I mean, time is money, right? So like a ton, ton, ton of time, but almost no money was spent doing any of this. Years and years and lots of time and lots of replying to comments and lots of reaching out to folks. But um, just to let anyone watching know, if you don't have money for this, I genuinely think that's better sometimes. Um, and just to show everyone like, 
because time is money, saving time anywhere is the best thing I could possibly do. So we've talked about this in some videos before, but this is just to show you how my workflow goes. This is my library in Adobe Express. Um, I have, so like, this is my, um, this is my library for Jordan and Danae. So, oops, no, it's not. This is my library. Nope, it's not. Sorry. This is. <laughs> That was my projects. So I have some <laughs> assets in here of like photos that I've used so I can pull photos from this part into the templates or like these are some of the um, assets I've pulled in from Illustrator. If anyone watching does custom things and other Adobe products, you can bring them in here. And so this, I can just have two different libraries, right? For two different brands, which is incredible. I have the two brands set up. So my colors are set, my fonts are set. And so this is everything. This is like, we actually did all of these in the past videos. These may look familiar to folks. This was like how I use the podcast um, info. This is my podcast template. This is my media kit. This is like when I do panels, I just recreate these templates. So they're all right here. Could not be easier. I don't have to reinvent the wheel at all. And like, this is my summer challenge. It may look familiar. It's the exact same thing with different colors and different prompts. Um, so I just make a template for myself that is Instagram size. Um, now we've been talking about reels and I learned the tip of animating text just to make it um, make it work. This is my weekly my weekly reel template. And then thank God for a scheduler. Like this is my actual schedule that I use. And this are these are the next like week two, week three, week four. They're ready to go. I will probably get busy and forget about them. And so now I don't have to worry about that. Like they are here, they're ready to go. That's amazing. Um, so that's just a bit of my workflow, like how I keep track of everything. Really, really thankful for um, Adobe Express. But yes, this is, this is my templates. This is my content. This is my buckets. This is my schedule. So that's my side thing. And then in the next 10 minutes, we'll talk about how I do this for Adobe. So this is if you are like a one to two person shop. Um, the great thing too, you can share everything. So like I've shared my library with my team so other folks can make, you know, templates for things. They can make blog post headers that all look cohesive. I can design them and then they pop in the individual things. That's great. And then we have the Adobe Express Facebook group, which if anyone has not joined, feel free to join. This is our insiders group. Andy and I hang out in here a lot. There are other Adobe staff hanging out in here a lot. This is um, this is my full-time job now. So this is what I do most of the time. And it was a pretty overwhelming project to get. Like here's a group of almost 100,000 people, make it cool. Okay, and like don't, and, and do it in 40 hours a week like that, you know, I was like, I'm going to have to be really strategic about this. So a nice thing is that like a lot of the principles are the same, no matter what the size of the business is. So thinking about what to post every day, we've talked about this in past videos is I think where like the biggest way to set yourself up for success is not getting stuck there. So um, I started by looking at what was already happening, looking at other Facebook groups that are similar, seeing like literally polling the audience. You can see in our featured up here, we do like, we do this a lot. So we have so many polls and questions pinned up here because the audience is all that matters, right? So like if I have a bunch of great ideas for what I think should happen in this Facebook group and no one in the Facebook group wants that, they're not good ideas. Even if even if they are, if they're not a good fit, like that's it. So um, I'll probably say that in every single video too, but ask your audience, <laughs> like see what folks actually want. So we're, we're actually doing that. We ask questions in here all the time. Um, and then we did buckets, which I think was in the, in the content video. Um, you can scroll back through the Adobe Express YouTube and catch that if you want, but content buckets are like, for me, one of the best ways, um, to actually know what you're posting. So looked at like, what, what, what are the goals of this group? What do the people in the group actually want? And like, what can I do to 
activate that, I guess. Um, so we have we have different pieces of content that go out um, every day of the week. That was the schedule I wanted, Monday through Friday, sometimes on weekends as a bonus. Sometimes things get moved around. Like That's something uh, you are not stuck to the schedule that you make. So if you start coming up with something and need to shift it or need to change it for a week or whatever, feel free. But we have like, we have a challenge that goes out, um, not always every week, but usually at the beginning of the week, we have some sort of challenge to create something, design something. Um, and then we have like template shares that folks, so it's like this holiday is coming up or this season is coming up or this thing may be useful. Here are some templates that we found. We have actually uh, every Wednesday is what you're working on Wednesday. So just drop your work in progress or your finished progress or your finished thing. Um, okay, this is the most recent challenge that I posted yesterday, I think. Um, and then we have events over here on the side. Hey, look, it's the event we're doing right now and all the things that are coming up. Um, and so to keep track of that, we've shown this tip before, but love the draft option of scheduler. So this is like, this is a sample week. Um, you can drag it down every week. You can keep it at the top of the month to keep track of. If you're changing your mind, like you can switch days. Um, you can delete something and start over. You can double up on things. You can decide five days a week is way too much. Just do three. But this is to have this as sort of the guide to come back to for me is the greatest thing that there is. Um, Conscious of, of time, we've got a couple of questions as well, yeah, which I yeah. think are quite, quite good ones I'm ready. Um, uh, for the last five minutes. Um, I think it's, a, it's an important one. I think, uh, Dana, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, sorry if I'm not, um, says it's very overwhelming to start. I'm on my fifth week of creating the first post for my new design Instagram page. Sad face. Um, yeah. So is that the fifth week of still trying to create the first one um, or the fifth week of, of creating posts would be my, my first question. But yeah, overwhelm, especially when you're starting from scratch is, is real. And I think you're, you're not alone in the way you feel, but um, any, any advice that you would give off my the bat? My advice is just do it. Like, so I think social posts feel very important and I'm obviously we spend every week talking about them. They are important and they're never as important as you think, or like what it is is less important than doing it kind of like i also don't post trash all the time like this i say this with a caveat of like be intentional but if you have an idea and you're just nervous to hit send just do it and you can always delete it if you change your mind but for me like just do it is the move um and then look around for inspiration if you don't know what to post don't copy other folks but like scroll hashtags that are in your business, see what they're doing. Um, think about the things you like and you'll get, you'll get a feel for that as you go. So just start is what I say. I know that's like, sounds like kind of goofy advice, but it truly, that's what I tell myself every time. Just post something. I'd agree. And probably one of the, yeah, the easiest ways to start is obviously, yeah, follow those accounts that you, that inspire you, reshare their content. Um, because then you'll get noticed by those accounts. Reach out to to, to like DM them as well and see if there's any way you can, you know, set up a some type of whether it's a podcast interview or whatever it might be, okay. um, a way to interact with that person. Interviews are always a brilliant tactic because everyone wants to be interviewed because people like to talk about themselves. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's always a great tactic that because then you can turn that into content. And of course, then as you've said already, Jordan, when you create that content, tag that other individual, that you, you're talking about that other person. So they're, of course, they're gonna share it, like it, et cetera. So, you know, and that's what I mean. Don't always obsess about the things that you're gonna create. Think yeah. also the things things and people you, you can work with. Absolutely. Um, uh, and Beck says, is it worth focusing on social media if you haven't discovered your niche yet? Um, what better way to figure out your niche than starting is what I say. <laughs> Just. That's how I found mine. I didn't think this existed. And then it became, I found the nuance. I found, I found where it, where it fits. Yeah. You, you have to get out there first before you figure, 
figure that out typically. So finding um, whatever category you operate in, probably my best recommendation here would go find those Facebook groups, etc. Hang about in those communities and start to feel like, you know, are they talking about those kind of things? They have that kind of pain. Feel like when you feel like you're in the right crowd for you, then then you know where you've kind of found your audience. Well, we've got a lot of questions coming in well, uh, for two minutes. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to probably <laughs> ask us in the Facebook group. Um, I saw one more question, which is the end of this well the end of what i was going to show is how do you collaborate how do you share things mm. so these are the libraries that are shared with me so like this is a library of backgrounds that were picked um and then this is the library of templates that we use in insiders so that everything is here ready to go and then we open a template swap out the background maybe duo tone the colors um so that is like just to share the end of the workflow everything is right here it's nice and easy um, and yes, this was shared with me by someone else on the team. So that is a great way to collaborate. If there are questions that you haven't gotten answered, um, I am at Jordan Danae Ellis everywhere and Andy is at Andy R. Lambert. Feel free to slide into our DMs. We are an open book to answer all of your social media questions. We're here every Thursday. Um, you can catch our replays on the Adobe Express YouTube, but yeah, Feel free to join the Facebook group. We were talking about that. We're in there. Happy to answer questions. Uh, just search Adobe Express Insiders. There's a Discord also. But yeah, if you just want to chat with Andy and I, you can hang out in the Facebook group or feel free to leave a comment on one of our posts or ask us any questions you have. Um, Alanika's dropping our, our Anika's dropping our links. Thank you. But yeah, we're here. We're here to help. I hope that you are like inspired to think about ways that you can do this in your own community. Any final words, Andy? I think you summarized it perfectly. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Thank you. Um, yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos and we'll see you next time. Have a awesome. great day. Take care. Bye-bye.